So hello everybody, welcome back to Law Hero, my name is Jen and I make videos about the law um, which will help you in bagging a training contract, internship, keeping your job and this is all kind of the soft skills they don't teach you in the law firm while you're busy learning the law a lot of people forget that all of this stuff is really really relevant to making uh, waves in your legal career so that's why I'm here so don't worry, okay, so the reason I came up with this video, Changes Are Coming, is because I'm reading a book at the moment called Post Corona. Post Corona sounds actually like a drink, but it's called Post Corona, and it's about how the coronavirus, notwithstanding how awful it's been on people's lives, it has accelerated rapid change uh, in business. So for example, e-commerce, um, has gone through the roof. We know Amazon's market cap has gone up. All the big data um, software, all anyone in those industries have done very well. But I thought, let's think about law firms, okay? So um, I did some research, as I always do, and of course, you know who the first person I'm gonna go to is Mr. Richard Suskind, because, you know, he just informs us about everything law related and we trust him here in the Law Hero Clan. So, okay, I'm gonna go down through a few things. Uh, I want you to take out your notebook and your pen because these things are very important to discuss at interviews. Now people are hiring and it's actually a, a hiring tactic. People who are not adverse to change or innovation. I'm so happy because for once, I was bloody well right. I spoke about this so many times. People were like, no, oh, that'll never happen. There'll never be remote working. There'll never be um, due diligence conducted by machines. And now all of that is happening. People are buying the software and look where we are now. We have to just suck it up. So everything has been accelerated and it's time we kind of just got to grips with it. I've made tons of videos on this topic, but this one is coming from a more like, what changes are actually happening um, from what I've seen and from what I've been speaking to colleagues about. Okay, so um, the first big thing, and like especially with Linklater saying they're gonna come to Dublin, is that monopolies uh, are really being broken down in legal marketplaces. And that is fantastic because it is driving competition. It means that clients are gonna get uh, more for less as Richard Susskind always says and yeah so the economic drivers of supply and demand are even more obvious but what's happening is the small guy is getting weeded out because they just don't have the money for the technology they don't have the money for the rapid contract management they don't have the money for the rapid reviews which big firms can just do in their sleep because they have economies of scale so it's kind of like what happened in retail like little comes and People like my dad, who's a butcher, um, they they suffer because they can't compete. So that's one thing that's happening. Um, and it is because of the outdated business model. It's just the way it is. Um, there's also this new trend because of Google that a lot of matters don't need to go to a lawyer. And we're seeing that a lot. Now that can lead to a lot of problems, but it is a trend and um, people are like, you don't need a lawyer for that, you can do just do it yourself. So for example, company incorporation is being done by lots of non-lawyer firms, even though law lawyers do do it. Um, that's one example. So because regulation has now increased, um, that's why there's more in-house lawyers, because the more regulated, non-regulated industries become, like for example, the one I'm in, automotive industry, um, the more need you're going to have for a central legal function um, in-house and then in turn in-house is going to need more support from private practice because um, you know certain areas are quite sophisticated there's a high volume of contracts in-house and the in-house legal council don't have time to do everything so that's one area of it as well and just on the whole in-house lawyer thing so that has definitely changed even since I've gone in-house in the last three years. There's definitely like a new wave of in-house and it's because of how life has changed. So I saw one very interesting thing here. So um, 
that we are going to be in like in house lawyers are going to be completely underpinned by technology because we will have the contract management we will have the billing will be um done by a software system like there'll be no more um like invoices and stuff that will all be done electronically um and then rather than just being um a legal advisor in house we become more of like strategists because we know so much of what's going on in the business because we're exposed to so many projects and we know so many people in the business. So we have great relationships in the business. We become more strategic to where the business is going. Um, when it comes to getting legal advice, we're expected to know lots, lots more than those who came before us in that we're expected to know not just data protection, commercial contracts, litigation, property um ipit um let me try and think like finance um literally everything we're expected to know literally everything and it's nobody's fault it's just the way these businesses have gone um the kind of like long tedious drafting and negotiations of contract that's really gone now and um, because everybody has become more sophisticated and um yeah i i think people are now used to contracts a little bit more now not everybody but they are and for example like risk and liability and all of that kind of stuff i think business business partners are a little bit more wary to those type of issues so you don't have to explain it so much all the time so that's one thing and like all of that then spills over into the law firms because the more sophisticated your in-house legal team becomes the more law firms have to step up as well so it's like a constant um eco cycle and then obviously like in-house if you are using like cutting edge technology to manage your in-house legal function if you have an outdated law firm come to you like that's never going to work from the perspective of client management because we want like quick response. We want to get to our documents easily. Um, we don't want an archaic approach. Uh, we want a quick turnaround. We want kind of agile people. And we also want to save costs wherever we can. So if we can do it ourselves, we'll do it. Um, we don't want to be charged repetitively for the same task over and over again, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's becoming really so software is extremely important for us um and like we're always trying to expand how much software we actually use um so yeah like it is it is i won't say it's a scary time but it is a time where even like i myself i have realized like i will never be done learning like there is, as a lawyer, you think, oh yeah, I learned this, I learned that. If I learn all this regulation, then I'll be grand. You will never be grand, especially in-house because there's so it's so multifaceted and there's so many different issues you get placed in every day and there's so many different angles to look at things. Um, definitely, and there's so many ways to structure things. Like you definitely have an awful lot of work to do. Um, so then again, I've spoken multiple times about these technologies, but primarily they are data mining systems. So you go through hundreds of contracts and you find what you're looking for, for example, like an assignment clause, uh, workflow systems. So like, for example, uh, Monday.com would be a workflow system. You wouldn't really use it. Well, you wouldn't really use it in house legal function, but I have seen teams uh, using it and it's basically like process management getting you from A to B and also you have like metrics of performance like people can't hide behind uh, emails and stuff like there's hard deadlines and if they don't meet them it's very obvious to everybody. Um, contract generators which like for example Thomson Reuters have which are very very handy. Um, AI systems um, they're usually used for the more unstructured uh, stuff because they're more intelligent and you teach them through um, natural language processing so it's machine learning um, obviously again we come back to this whole argument yeah lawyers will never be replaced by robots but a large part of what we do right now 
will be taken over by robots but it's up to us to upscale in other areas i think that's the thing people miss the most around this whole argument about are lawyers useful yeah of course we're useful and like we are largely project managers and people find that such a dirty thing to say they're like "Ooh, you went to law school you went to got a master's you went and did your few ones you went and did your black holes and now you're a project manager what's wrong with that like, I don't have to be wearing, like, a wig and sitting with a big quill on top of a pile of books to show my worth. Um, at the end of the day, as long as you're facilitating business, as long as you're facilitating your client to get the job done, to literally, in my case, get the car on the road, get the project up, who cares what you're called? Like, I don't care if I was called, like, I don't know, Miss Strawberry Head that's a really bad example but like if Miss Strawberry Head is helping the business get their stuff done it's fine I think people people get so worried about labels they're like ooh legal counsel and all of this like it has to be like yeah of course a title is important but at the end of the day like it's your work that speaks and like titles are just made up so yeah um yeah, the other big trend as well is like procurement. So like the purchasing arm of businesses, that's becoming a real thing because they really have to justify where money is being spent. And like, you know, they have to invite the correct parties to tender. They need to um, manage the procurement process well. And that was always a public sector thing. But now more than ever in the private sector, I'm seeing it like it's a tedious, tedious process and legal are involved usually quite early and rightly so because there's lots of legal issues when you bring new parties in. Um, okay, the other thing as well is like the soft skills or like the transdisciplinary approach, which I spoke about in my last video. And that's about... Um, being able to cross between different sectors, different areas of law. You're basically a jack of all trades. I'm not saying you're a master of none, but you're quite agile. You're able to move with the times. You're able to understand that the client is multifaceted and therefore you need to be multifaceted. Um, so yeah that is the big changes that i have seen in the last year um i absolutely love being in the legal sector it is a fascinating sector to be in but i will always stand by the fact that if you do not embrace change if you resist change uh you're gonna get a rude awakening and i love change i love how what I'm doing is changing. I'm loving how my channel channel is changing. I'm loving how the people viewing me is changing. You have to embrace change because I think I read it in the Tao Te Ching um, where the, I think, yeah, Lao Tzu said that everything is either um, blossoming or returning to the soil. So we're in constant state of flux, nothing ever settles and if it does you know you're in trouble if you've started to stagnate it means you're dying so you want things to change because you know that means things are alive and things are developing for for the better so yeah and um, the next video is called in the house uh what to expect when you go in house and uh yeah i hope that helps everybody and i will see you guys in the next one thank you so much for supporting me please continue to subscribe please tell your friends and uh, yeah, if you haven't already done so, please join me on Instagram as well for more daily tips. Bye guys.